Let's talk about medieval sword carrying as opposed to medieval sword wearing. Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator. Now, the other day I did a review, uh, well, actually not a full review, but an unboxing of this Langmesser. Okay, and in that video, I talked about the fact that often swords were carried in the hand rather than worn. And you'll notice that the belt, it does have a belt, has a belt for wearing, we'll talk more about that in a second, uh, is wrapped around the scabbard. Now, um, also, uh, by coincidence, I've also seen a discussion on the internet regarding long swords being carried. Now, anybody who studies, for example, uh, Fiori de Liberi's treaties or uh, Filippo Vardi, we'll see that there are sword against dagger defense techniques, which are really, really cool. They're brilliant. It's amazing we've got those. You've actually got very close parallels in Japanese martial arts as well, whereby the sword is being carried in the hand. Uh, in, in some cases, there's, uh, so just generally speaking, in medieval art, in some cases, there's a belt shown, like we've got wrapped around this Langmesser here. Uh, which is from Krieger Historical Weapons, incidentally. This is a windlass prototype for the Royal Armouries line that I've been working on, so this is not the final version, but it, it's a first prototype. Works for this video. Um, and you'll see that here you can see the belt wrapped around, and the belt's wrapped around because the belt does, is intended for it to be worn. But sometimes in medieval art, you see just a plain scabbard like this without a belt wrapped around. And incidentally, this is how the uh, windless Royal Armourist line will be sold with a scabbard, with a woodline scabbard. Um, it is rigid, there we go. It is a woodline scabbard, but there won't be a belt attached. Uh, so you can attach your own belts, which is a fairly simple matter uh, if you just get a medieval belt and there are various ways of knotting it and wrapping it. This is another one of the windless prototypes. Um, there are various ways of um, knotting it and wrapping Wrapping it, and in fact, I wore this at Tewkesbury recently. It's my own belt with fittings from um, Todd Cutler, incidentally. Um, so uh, <laughs> I'm pimping all of the businesses here. Very, very nice uh, belt fittings and buckle and uh, end there. And uh, I was where I knotted this based on various. Um, Effigies and medieval art that I've been looking at. If you check out my Pinterest page, which is linked below this video, you can see I've actually got a board on my Pinterest page specifically for what I've called simple sword suspension. So there's no extra rings, there's no extra complications. It's very clear if we look at medieval art that one way of suspending a sword from your side was simply to get a belt, you wrap it or knot it around. Uh, the scabbard, the plain scabbard, and then you wear it. It's as simple as that. And that's essentially what Krieger have done with this Langmesser. I mean, they've got a nice um, certain type of knotting method. This wasn't always used. Sometimes the, the, the knotting is at the back. There's various different ways of doing it. And again, if you look at my Pinterest page, you can see there's variations. But overall, they are all simple pretty basic ways of wrapping a belt around a scabbard so that you can turn what's essentially a plain scabbarded medieval sword, something that you could carry in your hand, almost like a walking stick, into a wearable sword. So these weren't necessarily different things. They were sometimes the same thing. It was the same sword, the same scabbard, just either with a belt attached or not with a belt attached. So if we look in Fiori or Vardi, sometimes you'll see swords, in those cases, long swords, but the, this applies to all swords. It doesn't matter whether it's a long sword, arming sword, langmesser, an early side sword, whatever, were sometimes carried in the hand. Now, let's just address that for a second. So yes, absolutely, if we look at medieval art, sometimes these long swords or any other type of sword were carried in the hand as opposed to being worn. Why might people do this? Well, that's actually a really big question. I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of depth here, but just uh, a cursory look at it. Fundamentally, it could be a question of convenience. It could be because you're going into buildings, for exa example, um, uh, you know, royal courts or um, even legal courts um, or uh, inns or places where you simply not allowed or not expected, not socially acceptable to walk around wearing a sword because it's inconvenient. And it's more convenient to take your sword with you in your hand. And then when you enter the place, you hand it to the guard or official or you hand it to your own servant or footman. Now that connects to another point of why you might carry the sword. So if we look at, um, so my good friend, uh, 
uh, Matt Gallus recently posted something on his Facebook and I commented it's interesting if we look at um, English law it specifically says in the 15th century 14th and 15th century actually that um, knights so people who were knighted were allowed to walk around in the city of London or any other major um, English city like York uh, with a sword normal people weren't okay so a commoner like you or me, assuming there, there might be some knighted people watching this. Hello, um, if you are. But for those of us who are not knighted, we wouldn't have been allowed to walk around the streets of London in the 14th or 15th centuries with a sword if we weren't knighted. But if you were knighted, you were allowed to walk around with a sword, wearing it or carrying it, or, and this is specified in the law, you're, you were allowed to have one um, squire, servant, footman, retainer with you to carry your sword but it specifies they could only carry one sword they could only carry your sword so you can have your sword with you because you want to show off the fact yeah you're a knight you want to walk around the streets with your with your sword it's also for protection theoretically um, symbolically I suppose but it's also a status symbol so you're allowed to have your servant walking around behind you carrying your sword now Therefore, this is something that's being carried. It's not necessarily something you want to uh, hassle yourself with wearing or carrying. However, in an Italian context, if we take it to Fiori and Vardi, it's very clear if we look at early Renaissance art from the 14th, 15th centuries, that there was a fashion for carrying swords around in the hand as well, probably for practical reasons as much as anything else rather than legal. But just really to point out there was potentially a legal reason as well uh, in England and France, for example, which had similar laws around sword carrying. So, um, absolutely people did walk around, and as I say, sometimes it is a plain bare scabbard like this. Now, if it's a plain bare scabbard, clearly you can't instantly wear it. However, remember that when I demonstrated with this sword here, um, this is an arming sword, but this could apply to a long sword. Absolutely, this is a normal medieval belt that has just been wrapped and knotted around the sword. So what you can do, if you want to have your plain scabbard and you've decided, well, for whatever reason, you want to wear the sword quite quickly, you can take your belt off, wrap it around the scabbard, knot it, and then, lo and behold, I'm, I'm sure this is slightly off camera, but lo and behold, you can quickly put it on and wear it. It's no big problem. It's no, you can do it in a matter of one minute, maybe. Okay, so absolutely you can turn a carrying sword into a wearing sword. And of course, in situations where we can see, and this is really common in medieval art, we see the sword that's being carried actually has the belt wrapped around it. So you've got a wearing belt, you've got a clothes belt, and you've got a sword belt, and the sword belt is already there, ready to go on the sword. So even though, for convenience reasons, because you might be getting on and off horses, or, uh, you know, I don't know, climbing up and down on carts, or up and down ladders, potentially, if you're going in and out of ships, bear in mind that's a major form of uh, transport at the time, uh, into and out of buildings, some buildings you might not be allowed legally to wear your sword, or socially acceptable, whatever. So you might want to carry it and then hand it to someone, so for various reasons you might be carrying your sword around, but then you get on your horse to ride out of the city because you're going to go back to your, your manor house, which is out in you know Surrey or Berkshire or something. Then in that case, you undo the belt and it's this quick and easy to do. You just unknot it, woo, belt comes off. There we go, we untwirl it and it's ready and done. Boom, there we go, wrap it around, stick it through the buckle, do the buckle up and you're wearing your sword instantly. You take it off again and you just wrap it back up and there we go. And this is up actually in medieval art, the belt is very often shown not particularly tidily done, not in a sort of Japanese formal fashion or anything like that, but just wrapped around and then one end of the belt is usually stuffed under like this to keep it from coming undone and jobs, job done. Jobs are good and, and now that's an easy to carry or store or stick in a baggage or whatever. So, absolutely, swords could be carried, swords could be worn, and a sword that is carried, even if it doesn't have an apparent belt on it, can quickly be attached to a belt. Um, and very often swords that were carried already had a belt attached to them. These are interchangeable things. Now, the final question here is, I have seen it said, that long swords weren't worn, long swords were carried because long swords are long and inconvenient and big. I'm sorry, but I've got to call BS on that. So first of all, historically, 
a lot of, I mean, you only have to look at Fury, a lot of long swords that were being carried in the 14th and 15th centuries are, their blades are no longer than an arming sword, okay? We can see that in the surviving swords. If you look at the Castillon swords, you look at any of the swords in the Royal Armouries or the Wallace Collection or wherever, very often we have what we call a bastard sword, you know, a hand and a half sword, and the blade is only marginally longer than an arming sword. But there are arming swords from the 15th century, and there are side swords which have 36, 37 inch blades, even up to 40 inch blades on an arming sword sometimes. And that's longer than a lot of long swords. So really, the blade length isn't really a factor. The weight's not really a factor. Um, the hilt length, well, I have spoken about this in the past. Now, we do see a tendency uh, in the 15th century that very often short hilted swords are worn vertically because that's not gonna get in the way. That's also even true of even quite long arming swords can be worn vertically with the pommel sticking straight upwards or only at a very slight angle. However, while we do see long swords worn sometimes like that, very often long swords are worn at a more canted angle, and that is almost certainly to get the pommel and the hilt out of the way of your arm and stuff like this, okay? So there is, and that's not categorical, again, there's a lot of crossover, but there is a tendency that long swords tend to be worn at an angle perhaps more often than um, short-hilted one-handed swords are, and particularly short swords. We often see hangers and falchions worn completely vertically, because in that case, the length of the blade and the length of the hilt are not a problem to wear it like that. Uh, and you, wearing a sword like this might be great for not having the pommel and the tip of your sword catching on things, as far as you're concerned, but it is more inconvenient in terms of other people because it swings around and it's more likely to hit other people. But long swords, categorically were worn. They weren't only carried. To say that long swords were only carried, what are you supposed to do on the battlefield when your main weapon is a spear or a poleaxe? You've got the spear or the poleaxe in your hand. Um, so very clearly you have to wear the sword. Um, um, so clearly in war, long swords were worn. In civilian life, long swords were also worn but there were various practical and legal considerations why sometimes a sword would be carried rather than worn. So, to summarise, a sword in the medieval period, 14th, 15th century, late medieval period, absolutely could be carried, absolutely could be worn in civilian or military settings and could be easily switched between those two. And it doesn't really matter whether it's a long sword, an arming sword, a, a messer or whatever else, a, a proto saber, anything, okay? Sometimes they were carried, sometimes they're worn, and you can switch between the two depending on the situation. I hope this has been useful and helpful. Um, share the video around, give us a like and a subscribe, and I will see you back on the channel really soon. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.